Princess Helena Frederica Augusta of Waldeck and Permont was a member of the German princely family. She became the Duchess of Albany through her marriage to Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany, the youngest son of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, in 1882. The couple had two children, Princess Alice of Albany and Charles Edward, Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. As a member of the British royal family, Helen had access to a remarkable collection of jewels, which reflected her status and royal connections. Helen brought jewels from her own family, the Waldeck and Permants, which included smaller but historically significant pieces. These jewels were worn at state events, royal gatherings, and family occasions, serving as symbols of her rank and heritage. After her death, many of these pieces were inherited by her descendants or became part of the broader British royal collection. In his book The Triumph of Love, Geoffrey Munn explains that the image of a snake biting its tail, known as the Ouroboros, symbolizes eternal love, a force that both consumes and renews itself endlessly. During the 19th century, snake-themed jewelry was a popular gift choice, making such pieces particularly fitting as wedding presents. For instance, Prince Albert gave Queen Victoria an emerald serpent ring on the day their engagement was announced. Similarly, Alexandra the Princess of Wales cherished a serpent bracelet, and as a trendsetter, her bracelet influenced fashion-conscious women well into the early 20th century. Even in the 1960s, the late Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret was known to wear snake bracelets. And several Victorian-era serpent bracelets were sold at the auction of her jewellery in June 2006. When Princess Helene of Waldeck Permont married Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany, she was gifted a five-stone half-hoop diamond ring and a diamond serpent bracelet from the citizens of Windsor and the surrounding area. The jewel is described as dot-shaped like a three-coil serpent, featuring ruby eyes and a large sapphire set in its head. The body is composed of 320 brilliant cut diamonds, totaling 24 and a half carats, along with 60 rose-cut diamonds. The ring is a five-stone half-hoop design, with the stones slightly graduated in size and of exceptional quality. The bracelet and ring were crafted by Mr. C. W. Seymour, a goldsmith from Windsor. Her daughter, Princess Alice of Athlone, later owned the serpent bracelet in a modified, smaller version. The brooch, designed as a natural rose with a half-open blossom adorned with diamonds, was worn by Princess Helen on her wedding day. In one photograph, she is seen wearing the brooch on her corsage next to the orange blossoms on the left, while in another wedding photo, she pinned it to her shoulder. The brooch was a wedding gift from her sister, Emma, and brother-in-law, the Queen and King of the Netherlands. It is mentioned as a piece of jewellery described as follows, in the archives of the Parisian jeweller, Malerio Ditzmela, the Dutch royal family places an order pan order. The design, referred to as diamond sprays, likely represents a composition of multiple blossoms, a fashionable style at the time. The Duchess later wore this devant de corsage at the coronation of King Edward in 1903, the brother of her late husband. In her hair, she wore a giant diamond star or sunburst jewel, a cherished gift from her husband that she always adorned on significant occasions, including the coronations of 1901 and 1911. Carl Edward, the one and only son of the Duchess, became the Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha and received this diamond star brooch along with other jewelry pieces, including a diamond necklace. Many years later, in 2011, the stunning diamond star was rediscovered when it was worn by the hereditary princess of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha during the Prince of Prussia's wedding celebration in Berlin, a fitting event to showcase such a treasured family heirloom. The bridesmaids gifted the bride a bracelet adorned with two facet sapphire drops and diamonds. The sapphires were set in a heart shape topped with a crown, while the diamonds framed the heart and created a wave pattern on the gold surface. 
This bracelet later came into the possession of Princess Sibylla of Saxe-Coburg Gotha, the mother of the current Swedish king and granddaughter of Duchess Helen. It is likely that this bracelet was presented to her as a wedding gift when she married the future Swedish crown prince in Coburg in 1932. At Charles III's coronation, Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden wore a bracelet that had been gifted to her great-great-grandmother for her wedding in 1882. In 1882, Princess Helena of Waldeck and Permont was gifted a diamond necklace and a large diamond star brooch by her groom, Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany, in anticipation of their wedding at Windsor Castle. The necklace became one of the Duchess's most treasured pieces, prominently featured in her jewellery collection. She first wore the diamond necklace on her wedding day and continued to be photographed wearing it in numerous official portraits, even after she was widowed in 1884. Following the Duchess of Albany's death in 1922, the necklace was inherited by her only son, Prince Charles Edward, Duke of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha. Remarkably, the family managed to preserve most of their jewels despite the challenges of the 20th century. The necklace later reappeared in 2009, worn by American investment banker Kelly Rondestvet when she married the hereditary prince of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha. Queen Victoria bequeathed this tiara to her daughter-in-law, Princess Helena, Duchess of Albany. However, it eventually returned to the main royal line during Queen Mary's reign. The royal collection describes it as a ruby, diamond, and pearl tiara, composed of 12 gold, tear-shaped sections adorned with diamonds and rubies, set on a gold and pearl band, with enamel portraits at the back. Originally gifted to Queen Victoria by Sahid bin Sultan, Imam of Muscat, in 1838, the tiara was later reset by jewellers Kitchener Bud according to designs by Prince Albert. It was displayed in the Indian Room at Buckingham Palace in 1924 and is currently on loan to the Louvre Lens.